I was hoping you'd stop by. It is good to see you. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of September 6th. Now, what I normally do on these videos is to bring you a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every day. Stocks under five bucks that you can find on every market. Today, I want to share with you some trading insights so that you can make the most off of these trades. And this information isn't strictly for penny stocks. It's for any stock. Heck, you can even use this on crypto. Absolutely. Now, in all of my shows, I try to make it a habit of telling you how I do my due diligence because I think it makes all the difference in the world. I look at the charts first. And there's a reason for that, folks. I don't have all the time in the world. Seriously, there's not enough time in the day to read every press release and every filing that came out today. And even when I find a hot piece of news, ultimately, I'm going to look at the chart to make my decision. So it just makes sense to me to start with the charts. Find a chart that has heat, that looks like it's ready to run, and match that to some hot news. You get some hot news to match a hot chart, you've got yourself a hot stock. Well, that's all fine and dandy. But what the heck do I mean when I say I'm looking for charts that have heat, that look like they're ready to run? What I am saying, folks, is I am looking for a chart that has a bullish chart pattern. Bullish chart patterns run over 50% of the time. Sometimes 60, 70% of the time you can count on a strong run from these. Now, there's a lot of information out there online about bullish chart patterns. Go do a search over on Google like I did. Put in bullish chart patterns, and what I do is go to images first because you never know what you can see at a glance. You can get a lot of information just like that. And that's what I did. I pulled up my images first, clicked one of the images, and it took me over to Pinterest. Pinterest has got lots of pictures. That's a little redundant. That's what the site's all about, posting your pictures. Well, they had loads and loads of what they call cheat sheets with diagrams of bullish patterns. And it looks like there are literally hundreds, maybe even thousands of bullish patterns to be going through. Ay, yi yi! How can you do that? It's not that. <laughs> Believe it or not, folks, when you boil it all down, there are basically less than 10 bullish chart patterns. We are not talking about candlestick patterns. Candlestick patterns, there's a lot more of them. You're dealing very focused in looking at bars. You're looking at two to seven bars and seeing what's going to happen. We're looking at the entire chart. We're looking at a symbol, a pattern on the chart that jumps out at us. So as you can see here, folks, there's lots of information you can get, but I'm going to boil this down and I'm going to show you the four primary patterns that I think you should be looking for when you're scanning your charts. What you've got there before you is the finished product of all my hard work, boiling down those cheat sheets. Going through hundreds, thousands of diagrams of bullish patterns, I come home with eight of them. <laughs> I told you folks, there are less than 10 bullish patterns that you really need to concern yourself with. And out of these eight, we're only going to look at the top four because they're big. When I open up a chart, I don't go searching for heat. The heat jumps out at me. I see an atypical breakout or a cup and handle or a double bottom right there telling me there's heat in this chart. Now, these other bullish patterns, the flag, the triangle, the pennant, they too tell us there's heat in the chart, but they're very tiny. You have to focus in on them. And since they all kind of look alike, you've got to look at them close to make sure you're seeing what you think you see. I don't want to go through all that. So I keep it quick and simple by just dealing with the bigger patterns that I can see in a heartbeat. So we're going to focus in on inverse head and shoulders, the double bottom, the cup and handle, and my favorite, the atypical breakout. Now the atypical breakout is my favorite because it has the strongest probability of breaking out. These three over here, 50, 60% of the time, maybe even 70% of the time, you'll get a run out of these. The atypical breakout will run seven, eight out of 10 times and give you a nice strong run. Now, don't go trying to do any research on this at Google. You won't find any information. 
I discovered it. This is my pattern, folks. You won't hear anybody else talking about this on YouTube except me. And it is my favorite pattern by a long shot. So let's focus in on these now and get a little bit of information. First one we're going to take a look at is the inverted head and shoulders. Now they call it inverted because it's upside down. Head and shoulders, just flip that up. It is a bearish pattern. Chances are the stock is going to fall. Same way with any of the others, the double bottom, the cup and handle, flip those upside down. They're bearish. They're probably going to push the stock down. Our inverted head and shoulders, though, is a bullish pattern that pushes the stock up. This normally comes when the stock is in a downtrend. She will break a strong SNR. She'll come down and she'll bounce and make a new support. She'll come back up to that primary support and resistance and then have a big drop. Very hard all the way down and this is going to scare a lot of people. Then it's going to come all the way back up making a lot of people happy hitting that primary support and resistance again. Then she'll come back down hitting this new support and then bouncing off of that getting our run. Now this is an easy pattern to recognize if it lays out nicely. The problem is this doesn't lay out nicely most of the time. Your shoulders can be at different levels. Your head, that big V, can be cockeyed one way or the other. Your shoulders can be at different heights, so it can be all different ways. It isn't easy for me to see. So I normally don't scan for this when I'm looking for heat. Some people see it real easy, like Taylor. She's my co-host on my live streaming event on Thursday. She sees head and shoulders and inverse head and shoulders like that. No problem whatsoever. Me, not so easy. Now, the other thing I do want to share with you about this, I'm always saying you should not be asking, how high is this going to go? That's a loser's game. You're setting yourself up for trying to find the ceiling and probably going to get stuck holding a bag. Well, there is an expectation that comes with the head and shoulders and the inverse head and shoulders. The distance between the top SNR, which they call the neckline, and all the way down to the bottom of the head, the other support, that distance right there, we normally expect it to bounce that far going up. Now, when you get into these, there are two ideas for when the best time is to get in. You want to get in when it gets over top of this support resistance, when it's breaking out over that. And a lot of people do. They get in right there. And you normally get a good bounce out of that breakout. But normally the initial breakthrough is not the run. It'll normally come back down and bounce on top of that new support resistance a couple of times, make sure it's strong, and then you get your strong push. So a lot of people like to bypass this one and wait for the second one here. But nothing says you can't play this. Get out, take your gains, wait for it to come back down, get in, and take second gains. Of course you can do that. Let's take a look now at the double bottom. This is a W. W for winner. At the end of the W, you normally see a big strong run. Flip this one upside down, it looks like an M. M for murder. At the end of the M, it normally falls and falls hard. And this is the way it sets up. She's bouncing in between two resistances, just like down here. When she gets over top, she takes a run. And it's the same rules here as it was for the head and shoulders. You are going to have a breakout. That initial breakout is probably going to surge a little, come back down and bounce, and then you're going to get your run. So you've got two places you could consider an entry, the initial breakout or the pullback and bounce. Again as well, however deep your W is, that's what you can normally expect it to go up. Now, I'm not saying that's as far as it can go up. It can go up a lot further. There's nothing to say how far it can go. And that's why I start using my supports and resistances. Supports and resistances are speed bumps on the chart that the price has to go over. And it's going to slow down before it reaches one, then it's going to speed up on the other side. Well, when it slows down, she may stop, she may back up. So I normally sell something. And if it's a day trade, I'll normally sell 50% at the first one. And I'll carry the next 50% to the next support and resistance. If it looks like she might slow down, I sell another 50%. And that's how you stay in the money. You don't take your entire investment all the way to the top. You sell climbing. 
So there's your W here. We had a strong downtrend, a real strong drop. She came down, popped up, came down, popped up, and took off running. Let's take a look at the cup and handle. Very easy to identify because it looks like a cup and handle. Now these can come when the stock is falling, when the stock is sideways, when the stock is climbing. Cup and handles come at any point, folks. What you end up with is a fall that comes back up to the exact same spot that it fell from. Once she hits that spot, she starts to dip some more. Now this handle is going to come down no further than one fourth to one third the depth of the cup. She comes down any further than that, you don't have a cup and handle. She's just in a fall now. Once she comes down one third or one fourth, she pops back up to that strong support and resistance. And again, on the other side of that support and resistance, you want to get in over it, not on the support and resistance, over it as she's moving up and catch that climb up. Taking a look at what that might look like on the chart. This is one I found, I think it was either Wednesday or Thursday. This was ticker BYRN. She was at $12.91. Took the whole day to do this. Now folks, that's something I need to mention. These chart patterns are easily recognizable on the four hour chart. Very easy. That's where I normally see them. You can see them on the one hour chart as well. And sometimes you can see them on the five minute chart if they take up a lot of time. You just can't have 15 minutes go by and have these patterns develop. So this took an entire day. As you can see, she was at the 200. She fell down here, rolled up, came up over the 200, had her pull back, and then she took off running. This was a beautiful cup and handle play. And we saw about four or five of these last week. Let's take a look now at my favorite breakout. This is the atypical breakout. I'm not going to say I invented it, but I did discover it. And what really makes my pattern different than all the rest, none of them include MAs. None of them have any MAs included. I do include the 200 MA in my pattern. It is important. What an atypical breakout chart is, is when your 200 day MA is falling hard and fast, your price is underneath it falling as well. When the 200 starts to level out, it becomes an opportunity for a breakout. You can't break out when it is falling. That's a slippery slope with ice on it, folks. You jump on top of that, try to stand up, you're going to slip and fall and come down further than where you started. So the best you can do is break it and come back down, break it and come back down. But once it starts to level off, you're going to start seeing the price get closer to it and wanting to break out until it does. Once it gets through folks, she takes off and runs. But like the others, your initial breakout goes up, comes down, bounces a few times and then takes off. Now there are some signals that come along with this so that you know when it's going to break out. First off, the 200 haul. I use the 200 haul. I'm going to bet most of you don't. It is just like the 200 day MA has as much authority and as much strength. You really need to have that on your charts. But the 200 haul doesn't just take 200 days of prices and average them together like the MA. It does that plus it relates to the price by relating to current prices. So you end up with an entirely different line here that actually likes the price. There's a relationship here. Look how the price is laying on that 200. Soon as the 200 haul turns blue on mine, it's climbing. You get a bounce and a jump. And when all the MAs are pushing up, closing in on the 200, which has gotten flat, Folks, we have a 9.5% chance that that sort of setup is going to break out and give you a strong run. You're going to probably want to get in just on the other side of the 200 as she's climbing. Smart person might want to wait to see if she hits the ceiling and bounces back. But in all cases, folks, in every single one of these plays, you need your supports and resistances drawn on the board. You need to know where the price is going to slow down and where it's going to speed up. And you're going to want to sell 
before these supports and resistances. Sell something. You never know when the bottom's going to drop out, folks. And when it does, you're going to get stuck. But if you're selling on the way up, you'll never get stuck. You'll always have money in your pocket. And when she starts to fall, you're going to sell the last of what you have and you're going to be in good shape. So there is a lot of information you can get about bullish chart patterns, but I have tried to boil this down for you. But if you want to go out there and look, be my guest, have some fun. There's lots of information out there. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.